Jeff is so reliable, uh, we may have to fill in with the other people. So you're talking about on the show tonight or in the article? On the show. Yeah. Um, the article. What's up? We were missing Jeff's uh, staple. What we're live? Wow. Um, it's going to be a somewhat of a different show today because uh, last week Jeff made fun of me, or two weeks ago, that my modem broke, and uh, he's telling me his modem doesn't work anymore. So, uh, his, whatever jokes he made about me and my Mac, suck it with your PC. Welcome to RC Babble, where we babble. And it's about RC. And tonight's show is a very special show, as always, because we didn't make it last week for Jeff's reasons, unknown Jeff reasons. No, he didn't eat a hot dog like Pete and shit himself. Um, so this week we have a topic, and I didn't put it up here, but uh, I'm going to make a little banner for everybody, just so we, in case you didn't read the stuff at the bottom of the screen when you click live. Uh, we can still call, eh? You can still call Charlie and call him about his uh, speed controls if you want to bug him at uh, Hobby Wing. Sorry, Charlie. Uh, More relationship problems. Yeah. Just chat, chat it up with him. Uh, today's show is a precursor to the next show where we reveal our picks. <laughs> so it's a show before a show. Pre pre show. We are going to be discussing the top 25 RC cars of all time. And today, since Jeff isn't going to be there, we are also going to do something crazy. We're going to send invites, not like the first time I did it and I invited the whole group, to random people. So if you have a microphone and a wired connection and want to come on and tell us your number one we're only going to ask you for number one picks because uh we don't care about your number 13. uh we are open to that and we read all the comments on our screen they all come up there so if you're on facebook or youtube brian all your comments go up here but if you have a microphone if you have a wired connection we can try your wireless but i will immediately boot you off like a bad caller on a radio show you're out if you've got no audio and no video. Uh, pants are required. Or no, they're not. You don't have to wear pants. I just can't see because I don't have pants on right now either. Uh, Tony, for a good time, you can... <laughs> if it gets weird, it's not my problem. I don't want to... No dick pics, please. Uh, I'm cool with nude. Uh, I would just keep it above nipple up. But yeah, I, no dick pics. Right. Yeah. So we're going to talk about our dilemmas with putting the parameters for this in there because you can look at this a couple different ways. What constitutes one of the top 25 RC vehicles of all time? Is it popularity? Was it, uh, it was out at a certain time and it was just, that was cool at the time. Uh, was it changing innovation? Did it direct something? Um, what are the thoughts on what should be in the top 25? Peter. Well, to clarify, I, I said, I, when I, I sent a list saying, so we want to pick it based on these things, not necessarily each car has to be all of them, but it should be at least one or two, as opposed to, well, the number one car of RC time is clearly the Turbo Hopper 5000, because that was the first one I got, and I loved it. Well, that doesn't really count, doesn't make that one a great car, you know, where anyone would say, I can see the logic in that, yeah, you know, that makes sense. I mean, because uh, for some people, I'm sure that the, uh, you know, the AMC Pacer is the greatest car ever because that's the one they had in high school and they had so much fun with it, you know, and they fixed it up with their dad. So it's the greatest car ever. No, mm -hmm. it's not. You know, it's the greatest car for you. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's plenty of cars that uh, are technologically influential and were sales hits or were uh, big race winners or, you know, performed well at tracks around the country for people. So yeah, that there's a million ways to slice which makes a car, what makes a car best or among the best. Yeah, so it's funny that you picked uh, 
So I want to do a little spoiler alert because this pick won't actually matter because it's so random. Is that uh, we had Joe, our crazy painter. I don't know what adjectives I want to put him on, on him right now. But, uh, of course, his number one pick was something that uh, doesn't make any sense. And that, I think, was the title Turbo Hopper. And I'm going to say it because, to be honest with you, while I loved the Turbo Hopper when it came out and I was blown away by the 9.6 V or whatever turbo power it threw in there, uh, I wouldn't put it on my list of RC cars of all time. But he did, uh, I'm assuming Pete's uh, looking at tick picks. I'm trying to queue up the commercial for it. Oh. So... Joe did pick that as his, and uh, we're going to go with uh, Hobby Grade because you can go with the Radio Shack uh, was a Golden Arrow or something like that. That was super awesome when I used to follow an RC car around with a cord because one of my first RC cars was a, a trike with a nine-foot cord on there, which was great. You know, you had to run around, get some exercise. Um. The grasshopper with a 540 there, Keith, was called a hornet because there was no 540 grasshoppers, um, which, you know, if anybody wants to come on live, we'll put you next to one of us and you can just put it on there. Um, but there are a lot of crawlers. And, and again, it really probably depends how old you are, what you feel was important because there's cars that I don't even think people even realized exist. It's something weird uh Oh, I had a friend over the other day. He never seen a record player in his life, and he's 25. <laughs> wow. He asked me how it worked. <laughs> uh, I thought that was very strange. I, I can't find the video of the head turning car, but oh well. Yeah, I mean, for uh, old people like us who remember everything from, you know, the original Grasshopper and Hornet coming out to the X Max. There's a whole bunch of cars where we're like, "Oh, that car was popular, or that one was influential, or that one was the first for something." But for someone who's like, "Yeah, I'm a super veteran into RC. I've been in it since you know 2010." Like, yeah, your frame of reference is way narrower. Yeah. So I think that's Dane. Hey, uh, that's what we're discussing. The criteria of was it number one in popularity? Did it was it like a race game changer? All that kind of stuff. That's yeah. what we're discussing for our next. We're going to do a reveal of our top 25. We're compiling a kind of like March Madness, not really top 25 lists where each one gets points. And then this way it's averaged out. So it's not, uh, uh, I don't know. It just makes more sense. I don't, yeah. know, I don't know what word I'm looking for. So I would say, Dane, uh, other than it shouldn't be your number one pick because it was merely one that you alone like and you can't defend it as being, you know, uh, having an impact on the larger industry. Uh, cars that should make the list, in my opinion, might be um, a sales success or technologically influential or they establish a new category or um, they were an exceptional value or uh, they had great success as race cars and, um, you know, dominate. Yeah, and even, even then, like just as a pure race car, I mean, so we'll address some people because nobody wants to show us their nipples, uh, some of the comments here. So Larry saying a gold tan RC ten. So I'm gonna go with that's an obvious one. Uh, where in the top twenty five is going to be the um, you know the question mark? Is it gonna be voted by everybody that that was the most influential? When I was a kid, that was one of the you know the dream. I'm gonna have an RC ten. Oh, so Topo Chico. Uh, so you know it might be more valuable to me, but this is where it comes in is is age. Uh, you know, is not always wisdom. Younger kids don't know what the F and Gold Tub RC10 is probably, or what it did uh, without internet and out, you know, anything to basically spread news except a bunch of morons like me at a track uh, in the middle of the park. So I would probably agree with uh, Larry. Where it's going to fall on there is going to be uh, subject to uh, me, Pete, Jeff, Joe, and I think I invited. Couple other people. I'm trying to. I think I may expand it to six, just to kind of like get some broader things. And I'm going to try to pick people that aren't like you know like stereotypical. Uh, you know, like I said, Joe's turbo hopper pick or whatever the heck it was makes his number one makes his number one pick really irrelevant. 
We might have to do a second round where you say, okay, because people had such disparate answers, we're, we're going to decide that these are the top 25, and then we'll, and now we have to decide what rank to put them in. Yeah. Because you might, you might find out that you get six people out of 25 cards, there's only like seven that actually appear in everyone's list. Right. I, I think a lot of them will fall in there, and we'll find out. It's kind of, it, well, part of the thing is the fun of seeing what the hell happens with it. Um, this, I addressed a, a grasshopper with a 540. is just called a Hornet. So uh, <laughs> uh, that's an arguable one, to be honest with you. Uh, I haven't made my list yet, and I'm try I'm not reading anybody's list. I did read Joe's first one, or it confused me because it popped up in my email. Um, and I think I read Pete's. Sorry, Pete. And I tried not to read anybody's just to be influenced by anything. And uh, I kind of been thinking about this, and, and like Grasshopper Hornet, uh, I think you can argue could be in there because that's actually one of the first for me, like real RC cars I've seen drive in the street. And on Jeff and I always make a joke about speed is if you remember how fast a Hornet was when you were a kid, when you put like a, and at the time probably would have been a crazy motor, like a 14 turn in it with bearings on the street. It was like, you know, 40 miles an hour. And it was a missile. Um, and it was also sold in Toys R Us by Tamiya. I remember seeing it for sale in Toys R Us. Uh, you know, a, a game-changing design? No, not at all. You know, a uh, classic tub with some springs and some nails in the front for suspension, and then the weird slotted uh, live rear axle. I had grab up on my list, and I changed it to Hornet because I thought, you know, the Hornet <clears throat> having a 540 and being more of a performance yes. car um had more on the spot in the list but they're both on my mind because they, they they just were so popular i mean like if you went into your local hobby store and they're like wow what's that oh it's an rc car and uh, how much is it well you're looking at the hot shot which is really expensive but the hornet is this much which is half you know or the grasshopper and so many people got started in the hobby with a hornet or, hornet or a grasshopper because it's technically my list i was actually going to combine a uh, grasshopper hornet to be the same car because yeah, really, that really was a black body and a motor change. So, yeah, you know, if I was voting them in the thing, if you voted for one, you voted for the other because no, yeah. no, you, you could also have a rough rider and sand scorcher as the same car. That, that I wouldn't remember. Yeah. Um, I had sand scorcher on my list too. Hey, hey don't lose any surprises, you know, I'm trying to be surprising. A little bit uh, shoppers, I mean, it's Bill. Uh, so here's my thing, and I thought about this because the, the RC10. Uh, everybody in the world had. That was a, if you were into RC back in the '80s, that was a very popular car. I'm sure Associated sold it. I think the technical term is a shitload. Uh, the JRX2 and JRXT were more niche to me, to be honest with you, and because I, I really thought about that, about would I say that the JRX2 was in the top 25? And I'm not going to tell you my answer. We can discuss your thoughts on it because, Pete, uh, if you think that it should, or what do you think about the JRX 2 and T? Yeah, I think they have a place because, I mean, that's the uh, classic rivalry. And um, I think without Lozy uh, pushing Team Associated and vice versa, you may have seen a slowdown in the innovation there because who else was really trying to race at that level? Um and they're, they're good cars. And I, I think in the later years, I, I think Losey is really pushing innovation more so than Team Associated. Right. But so I'm not discounting the Losey thing, but I would, for me, when I thought about these cars as well, I would probably go farther up the line because I think like the double X was probably the, the, the changing yeah. thing for me where I would say that trumps, you know, my vote for those two. Because at the time, while the JRX2 was cool, uh, cool it was really just adding another car uh, to the race field. And while it was, you know, a flat graphite chassis compared to the uh, aluminum pan, I didn't see it. It's, it wasn't like it started a craze like an RC-10. Yeah. But I would say like in technology and racing that eventually I think uh, the low C surpassed it in some of the look and design. And I'm not talking about winning because you can't argue that the RC-10 has kicked uh, <laughs> the low C's uh, a proverbial ass around the track. Um, I would go with a later version of that car. Yeah. And I think the JRX2, too, part of its claim to fame was it came ready to race, if you will, uh, in terms of spec. It was, it was a kit, but it was, um, it had bearing, it had everything. You didn't have to buy anything else to make right. it its 
top spec as a race car. But I, I agree. If I had to choose, I can't remember what I put on the list for Lodi stuff, but if I had to choose between JRX2, JRXT, or double X, triple X, I'd say, well, I'm going to put the double X and triple X on there as more influential race cars that really change things. Yes. Um, you got. I can't remember what I put on my list though for, for Losey. Yeah. We'll, we're going to go over our actual lists. Uh, hopefully next week. Um, it depends if Jeff gets his internet and his life together and cell phone service and internet. Uh, well, the bar right now is set at, can you send me decals? So, Oh, he said he sent them. Really? I feel, yeah, because he asked me to pay for shipping. So uh, <laughs> he bought a webcam, uh, which I was like, why did you buy a webcam? I see you on the camera. Uh, and so uh, somehow I get to pay for it. Um, Tony put the Mini T and RC18 in there. I don't think I had a Mini on my list. Um, oh, by the way, I will never have a Mini on my yeah. list. I guess and it's not because not because I'm not a huge fan of, of Minis, but for me, it was like, like yeah, they Lozi sold sold a ton of those. So did Team Associated. Um, uh, I mean, if you were telling oh, me I, between those two, I would say the RC18. Uh, you know, if I'm I'm not yeah. in my top 25, or maybe I could. Maybe it's a a good discussion to think about. But the RC18 was definitely a more popular car. Yeah. Uh, and what would put the what would, what would put them on the list for me, even though I'm not a mini person, is if they were still a huge category today, which they aren't. I mean, they sell, and I know the new mini T is, is I guess, is doing well. But uh, to me, it's not like you own the hobby store and like, yeah, we sell tons of minis every year. That's a big seller. Is the 118 scale cars, you know? Yeah, the, I voiced that I hate mini cars. I don't really hate them. I had fun putting a fast motor in a mini car and uh, modding the RC18. To race uh, box stock, but how to sand the wheels down. Um, they always come out, ironically enough, around Christmas because they're somewhat of a price point. I don't know how to give someone a real RC car, so I'm just going to give them this tiny one. Uh, two, I mean, I'm going to segue into a little thing. Two mini releases where they released an 18th scale Losi uh, buggy. I don't know if we talked about that, like the whatever it's called. The new thing that they just released, the smaller one, and then the axial commemorative. I'm going to make it smaller of the deadbolt. Uh, and again, I think they only came out around Christmas because I, I don't know. The small things annoy me. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to get into the small things. He probably wants me to see a small car on my list, although 12 scale might be uh, something that could make it on there. What, what I don't really like about mini stuff is I, I think that there's a lot of people because I've certainly seen customers do this like at trade shows and stuff and even hobby stores is you know they'll like tell me about this hobby i need to like educate me on what i should get for my kid my first we're gonna get okay great and maybe you explain to them all the stuff and you get them to narrow it down to like maybe you know a, a two-wheel drive you know 110 scale 200 dollars price range car and there's reasons to get a buggy or a truck whatever but that's basically what you're you're looking at it's going to be rugged and dependable and fun and the shop has parts and all for it so great and then they're like, oh, wait, I didn't know you had these. And they pick up a mini. This is perfect. This is even better for him because it's smaller. Like, that doesn't mean anything. That That's not a reason that makes it better for a younger person because it's smaller. You know, it's not. It, it's going to be, it, it will be less capable in your backyard. You, you won't, it won't be as versatile. Um, it's less, you know, compelling and, and like, like, wow, it's big. That's exciting, especially when you're a kid. You know, all that stuff. And I, I, I wonder how many kids went home with a mini that might have become really entrenched hobbyists, but the mini was a one and done for them because they didn't have something that was going to be bigger, more compelling and interesting and kept them hooked on it. It was just a slightly better toy. Yeah. And there, uh, to be honest with you, just the price to me is stupid because like, uh, I, I'll pick on the Kyosho mini Overland, uh, Jeep that came out. How much is that thing? Like 250 bucks? I don't even know. I'm betting 250 bucks. Um, so it's like, it's not even a, it's a, it's not even a lot of times a cost savings unless they're really cheap. We have springs and, you know, uh, no, get me wrong. There's some cool looking stuff. Like I got mini Z like on a bigger track. I liked before they tried to make them ultra fast that it, they were cool looking. They were slow where you got to actually, uh, run racing lines and do corner speed where it was probably a little bit more realistic speed. Um, I got the competitiveness of that, and then they had the stupid uh, Radio Shack ones. What were those called? Zip Zaps. No. 
the ones where they had the actual series and David Jun won the NSX, they were sort of like a mini Z competitor. Yeah. Um, uh, I, can look, I, have to know. I can look down in comments, but uh, they actually created that racing series where they had, uh, you know, everybody, uh, somebody won an NSX and, and, no surprise, uh, an on-road professional racer joined this thing and you you know raced the regionals and X mods. Was X mods? Yeah, there you go. And uh, David John won an NSX and the son of a gun sold it. Should probably should have kept it because it's probably worth. Uh, well, to be fair, it was a tuner car, which makes it a nightmare. And like it costs so much just for him to take it home because they don't cover the taxes and everything. So yeah. Yeah, but you weren't going to get a hundred forty grand car for twenty grand. You know what I mean? So mm, well, I would have I would have taken I would have taken out a small loan. You would have got a good uh, interest rate on a twenty thousand uh, dollar. And I don't think they modified the engine. I think they just put some ugly ass parts on it, just like a X mod. Um, but so th they actually created a racing series around it. But again, it's also gone, and it was uh, they didn't stick with it. Uh, whoever releases many stuff tends to not stick with it. Um, Tim has a list here, which we, we've discussed. Uh, he just barfed out everything here. So Traxxas Slash, uh, I would argue, is in there. T-Max, I, I mean, that's almost the, the no-brainer of them all. Um, and I, I kind of agree, uh, you know, I don't know if I don't know if I'd put the Grasshopper in the t in above 12 to me. Well, see, like, that's the thing. What, what goes at the top? Something that's more recent or something that's a classic? Because, like, Let's say you have like greatest muscle car of all time. Is it the 69 Camaro or it's the car today that costs the same as the Camaro did, adjusted for inflation, but it's got 500 horsepower and it's right. infinitely better. You know, I. Well, but I mean, if you want to argue, I'd say if the Camaro is out now, you could say Camaro as a general and like pick your favorite year. You know what I mean? Um, uh, Kyosho Optima. Yeah, ish. I mean, I remember, you know, when four-wheel drives were super exotic, like crazy, oh, here's a chain drive, and I didn't even understand how a gold necklace from the mall worked as a chain drive. Um, I think it was cool, but I think that car actually sucked on the track. I mean, I, I mean, they went to belts really quick. So, well, And Tim might mean Optima mid when he says Optima, but yeah. Um, and that's a tough one, because I, I think Jeff's list will be um, each top car from the last each top race car from the last 25 years starting in 1984 um, <laughs> that's, and that's not a diss against jeff if you're watching i just I, we talk to jeff every week we know how he thinks if it's not racing it ain't s yeah. so that's probably what it'll be and i'm sure the optima will be on there it's going to be like you know um rc10 optima te technology predator um you know triple x uh, every race car <laughs> uh mini z um <laughs> Uh, the Bowling Eliminator. No. I mean, I, I would say if I'm doing a, again, I'm not revealing my list. I think there must be a pan car uh, in this list from the heyday of oval days. Uh, so, I mean, I would give it to the 10L, but I'm, yeah. I'm sure the, I mean, Bowling Eliminator probably was the, the top car at the time. I, 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 mean, I had a 91 Sport and loved it. But if you want yeah. to put a pan car on the list, I would say you got to do RC12E, like, first big influential electric uh, RC race car, you know, or you do like the RC one team associated first team associated car ever, which was a, a big pan nitro car. Um, 10 L like you said, but I, I don't think the eliminator would be the one. What was the other? I mean, there was a couple of the bull link was probably bigger than associated for, for oval. There was the, what was the other big chassis brand that was kind of the off brand? Well, there was, there was bull link. There was Cobra. There was uh, hyperdrive. There was, yeah, uh, Parma PSE, um, Custom Works. I think made oval car. And then they, they make dirt oval still, but I think they also had. Uh, yeah, they were a little later to the game, but I, I'm thinking of kind of like in the heyday of of oval. When it, I mean, I raced oval, uh, and it was fun. It was just super expensive, and I was a kid and had to steal all my stuff from the hobby shop to race. Sorry, hobby shop that I stole from. Um, but it. Uh, it was a different time, but I would definitely because for me that I just remember racing my RC 10 L and it was great. You know what I mean? I even had the fiberglass one. I couldn't afford the carbon fiber one. Um, I had a 10 L S O for oval. I don't was S O. Mine was <laughs> it was a later one. 
Uh, see what else some people say. Uh, Blackfoot, uh, you know, it has its merits because I think that was also a try. I mean, you could almost make a top 25 list of just Tamiya cars if we're going to be yep. real about that. I mean, uh, you know, that, that might even be a different uh, article. But um, the Blackfoot was cool, uh, except for if you ran it. And you blew through the graphite pencil dog bones that were shaped like a circle. That basically, once you went through the grass three times, you needed new axles. Yeah, you can't run it. I mean, <laughs> no, it's stupid. I don't, I don't even, still don't even understand that design of uh, of the drive axles. It, it literally was made out of like pencil graphite. It was soft. They last forever if you just hold the car in the air and run the throttle. But uh, yeah, but they don't want to put on the ground. Super efficient with the uh, lubricating graphite. Um, obviously, they eventually went to dog bones, or you did what everybody did at the time and bought a Thorpe Rear M. I remember being scared to get a, a Jimmy RC car because very, very early on, I, I had read that the dog bone was just a plast was metal, but had a blob of plastic at each end that the crossfin went through. And I didn't realize because um, from the way the person wrote their review that like, no, there is a blob of plastic at the end, but the crossfin goes through the metal drive shaft and the the round part is plastic because that just locates it in the drive cup. It doesn't actually support any drive load. That's a very inside baseball technology story from when I first got started in RC. I, I never thought about dog bones other than the, my friend who had the, a Blackfoot started to come up with creative ways to make his own dog bones. And one of them was uh, uh, plastic tubing that he just screwed through the both sides, which did work, but not for very long. He also tried making, uh, when belt drive became popular, he tried making his own belt drive by soldering the spur gear to a V and then gluing jelly bracelet uh, to <laughs> to a length to try to make his own belt drive. That did not work. John Martinelli, I used to race that. That, that didn't work? Uh, surprisingly, he did not take on hyperdrive or anybody like that. But uh, that's what we did when we were... 13 in high school on Friday nights, we'd be soldering. And, you know, that was a fun time. We were just making stuff, you know, soldering batteries together and running in the street as long as we could. And uh, and he was trying to make a uh, belt drive with jelly bracelets. <laughs> it was way cheaper. It was way cheaper than the hydro drive or a uh, hyper drive or whatever the hell that was. Here's my belt drive story and a beautiful car that is not on the list. Um, I, I, my move um, when I was first uh, – getting into RC was uh, when last year's car went on sale uh, for the uh, tower hobbies on you know clearance, um, I would scarf those up uh, and I got the Kyosho Triumph for like a hundred bucks or something on blowout. And I was super pumped because I'd been like ogling this thing in the big tower book for a long time. And now I've got a Triumph. And this is like probably my first like really good car. Um, I also got a JRX Pro SE. Um, uh, a I don't later. know what the Triumph is, so I'm gonna actually have to look up that. Yeah. It was a what? Kyosho? Double deck graphite chassis. It came with the platinum shocks. I mean, it was gold shocks, but it was it was uh, Kyosho's top end two wheel drive buggy. Uh, this was uh, after oh. Ultima came out. This is they followed with like we're going to build a real race car, and this was the, the Triumph, and it had a belt drive transmission. It had two belts in there. This one belt drive was hot because hyper drive was happening, and I was racing stock class at the time, and um, I thought that the Triumph would be a big improvement. So I, was, I had an Ultima that I had made as close to a race car as I could. And this thing was dog slow because there's so much drag in that belt transmission. And I tried everything. To, I took the shields off the bearings. I, I hogged out the transmission because I thought maybe the belts are dragging on the case. Like, it was just the worst. And there's nothing you could do. There's no, like, gear transmission conversion for it. Uh, so that went into the case of the hobby store. But that was a, a big letdown when the Kyosho Triumph was not oh, off. Should have made Jelly Drive. Uh, jelly Drive. Yeah, Jelly Drive might have uh, saved it. Uh, but for a while. You can buy belt drive conversions for the RC10, and you know, you had to yeah. have a lot more. And they and nobody that never lasted, to be honest with you. I think at the t technology was battery technology was too low, and the, the tension to make them go was too high. Uh, a lunchbox with Trinity Monster horsepower is that Ernie? Um, I like the lunchbox, Midnight Pumpkin. Um, I don't know. Again, I think this is more of a top 25 Tamiya ones. I, I don't think I'd put a Lunchbox or Midnight Pumpkin in there. I'll tell you, if we wanted to make it a real nightmare to put together and we included like top 25 
accessories or upgrades or that sort of thing. I would definitely uh, say pour one out for to me a speed to me a, a Trinity speed gems because I I love those motors. I was buying those things all the time. Yeah, the cheap uh, modified ones. Yep. Yeah, I uh, dominated RC Madness with that thing, and it drove everybody mad because we raced <laughs> indoors on the smallest track. I forget what I, I don't remember what it was, but uh, I I would want to say that I was almost unbeatable with it. And then when I went outside to their big track, I still won and modified, but I was literally half as fast as everybody down the street. And uh, mother effer Chris Marcy would make fun of me. Is Derek leading the mod class with his stock motor? And I actually had to buy a um, mod motor just because I was embarrassed how slow I was. But I, I mean, obviously, I had more core speed than everybody, but it was painfully slow. And a lesson that the fastest motor doesn't make you faster. It's just all about lap time and corner speed. So if you're faster with a slower motor, don't get sucked in there. Um, see what else somebody else put in here. Uh, Can I just say, for all the benefits of brushless motors, they are so boring compared to brushed. As far as cool can decals and just yeah, they have all been and, you know they look cool and stuff. Brush motors were pretty fun. Uh, this is the only other person that I think knew this car existed, and it will not be on the list because of that. Because I learned about this car from Pete, and uh, and I don't know what part of this we were talking about, but uh, yeah, more Dave ain't making that shit. But uh, <laughs> congratulations, uh, midwife, on your. Peter, is this like Peter's brother that he's calling in? Yeah. It's like it's the British like bowling digger. Yeah, I, I looked it up and I, I saw it. It's a hot pile of garbage. But uh, but you know what? You get ten guys with the identical hot pile of garbage and you have fun. Well, again, I will give. So remember, uh, bowling uh, the digger that was uh, hot for, legend, hot for about a year, right? And uh, that created a race class. It was indoor digger class. No, really. Legend, do you think of? Yeah. Well, the digger was the bowling one with just a. Basically, it was two slabs of uh, fiber, black fiberglass with an axle through the back. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I think maybe it had like RC10 spring. Front yeah, was, you had another fiberglass plate up front, and then you had two kingpins, and you just had the old fashioned RC10 yeah. uh, or RC10 pan car style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Slide up and then the kingpins. yeah. And then it had a coupe body or whatever, and, and uh, it was the cheaper Legend because I think the Legend car was expensive ish for what, what that was, which was the same thing, just. The chassis was flat instead of having two uh, side rails. No, the the legends was also side rails. I don't think any. I never saw anyone race the diggers. Only the legends. The legend was side rails. I thought legend was flat. No, legends was legends was just the. I think the the digger and legends were the same car except the digger had the hole for the axle drilled lower, so the whole chassis was lifted up because it was in like an off road. Off road, stadium. yeah, yeah. yeah. It really wasn't off road. Uh, I'm gonna check the legend because I could have swore it was flat, but it, no. They must have created some other one where, where I raced the on road that was similar to that class. That was a spec class, which was cool because at the time their spec class was you paid like 80 bucks and you got a battery and a motor. And every week they rotated battery and motors between people. So if you wanted to hot tune it the next week, you ain't running off somebody's faster yeah. motor. Well, when, when Trinity Bowling and TRC, I think TRC and Trinity was in company at that time, but they were really trying to make spec happen. They, they all had a flat chassis fiberglass car. That were pretty much interchangeable. You know, you had a integrate integral T plate rear end and like a, a piece of music wire with a, with fuel tubing on it as a damper slash shock. And but that was later. That was that was probably later than what you were doing. That was like in two thousand ish. They're they're a flat pan car, the spec one with the colorful yeah. tires. Yeah, yeah. Fast attack, uh, cool looking vehicle. I definitely wanted one. Um, not on my not on my top twenty five. Yeah. It's Hornet technology. Yeah. Well, was it a Hornet? Or well, was I think it? it's an independent suspension around, but it had, it had the nail suspension up front. Yeah. yeah it looked awesome, awesome, though. It still looks awesome. It's 10 penny nail. Yeah. yeah. No, it was, it was cool. Uh, one of my dream cars. The only way I decided what car I was going to get when I was a kid is what I could afford. Like, I wanted the Fox, but I can only afford a Falcon. And I don't really know what the price difference was, to be honest. But I know it was more expensive, and uh, Santa only brought me the Fox. Um, let's see who else got some picks here. Uh, if you're wondering where Jeff is a uh, part of the trio, uh, Jeff is Jeff. He barely shows up. Uh, he works when he wants to. He said, F you this week. No, he is, uh, he had modem trouble. So he says, find out if that's real next week. Um, let's see anybody else. Uh, Savage. 
Something that, I mean, I would consider, um, you know, obviously at the time the competitor was T-Max, right? So the Savage was bigger. Uh, yeah, the, the Savage was the only answer to the T-Max that actually stuck around. Yeah. And HBI, to their credit, they did a different kind of chassis and they went to a big block and they really did something that was different, but clearly trying to compete with it. And yeah. that thing stuck around for a long time. They still make it? Is there still a Savage in the lineup? I don't even know. I mean, I, I don't even know if HBI is still. I mean, I've seen someone put a press release, some HBI stuff up. Yeah, they, they've got a, a brushless version of the jump shot chassis, which is a yeah, great vertical plate, two wheel drive, two hundred. Yeah, welcome back. Um, I, I mean, it's talking about twin vertical plate. That was the chassis, right? TVP. Mm -hmm. uh, what a nightmare to work on. So next time, if you're designing a stupid chassis, please don't ever make that because it's fifty thousand effing screws to get inside, and uh, while it looks cool and something like that, it's stupid as. I don't even think it looks cool. I'm not a big fan of the twin vertical plate look. Yeah, I think it, I mean, it's somewhat looks more like a real truck. It, your opinion is just as valid as mine. I mean, I, I don't know. Not, sometimes not. But for me, but yeah. I just looked at it as, oh, I'm never taking this thing apart because uh, you can literally not get into anything without taking the whole thing apart. And I'm, I mean, sure. Uh, who else we got here? So, yeah. real quick, if I said, Best looking car with the body off. Just what what pops into your mind? What what do you think are some pretty cars with the body off? Uh, well, I mean the new. I don't have it close enough to me, but I would say that new Tamiya Formula E car, which is kind of sexy because it kind of mm -hmm. still mimics uh, a Formula One car, and then that would go to the other monocoque Formula One car that was out, which I can't remember. I don't was it an HPI? Did they make like a molded carbon fiber chassis? Somebody made some like I did have a monocoque F1 chassis. I, I think you could buy it for like four hundred dollars by itself, and they probably made ten. Uh, but that, that was more of a thing you saw in the magazines and thought it was cool than something that actually appeared. Um, Predator, the Predator tenth technology was mm -hmm. a cool looking car. Uh, I mean, realistically, because you're so used to seeing an RC10 and all stuff like that. I mean, I, I can't argue that looking at a modern, uh, whatever they call it, Losi or Associated when it's decked out professionally doesn't look amazing you know what i mean like you, you get a little jaded being seeing it all day every day of you know most of your life it's not amazing but i mean thinking of cars that stood out when you saw it i mean the predator was like that was cool uh maybe the low c8 when that first came out uh which would be debatable to be in the top 25 to me <laughs> um <clears throat> what do you got what i mean what do you think I like classic stuff. Uh, pretty much anything with a double deck graphite chassis, I thought looked cool. You know, they'd be converted. Uh, there was an accessory chassis for RC10. Those look gorgeous. My Kyojo Triumph, I thought was beautiful as slow as it was. Um, the RPM uh, chassis set for RC10 that made a cool looking car. The body off. Um, our, uh, HPI R4 Pro 2, I thought was a gorgeous car. Purple and graphite, that was cool. Yeah, yeah I, get, I, mean, I guess did they start the purple trend? I, I don't know. Yeah, for me. Uh, Tamiya, when they were doing a lot of graphite chassis for like TAO2 and TAO4, uh, those are really pretty cars. Uh, Gold Tub RC10 is still gorgeous. Um, the whole Gold Shock era of RC, there are lots of really attractive cars. You know what's a really great looking car? I, uh, this is one, another closeout that I bought. Uh, back when no one, there was no eBay and no one cared about vintage RC. It was like worthless junk at the hobby store. Like you'd see like a Tamiya Vanquish. Like, you want to sell that? I'll give you 50 bucks. Okay, fine. 10 years. Spinning. Like I bought so many cars that way, but uh, I bought a Traxxas Bullet, and it was gold with it was gold because you know RC10 was gold when the bullet came out, and it had all natural plastic parts, and I dyed all the parts blue, and some were black, and it contrasted with the gold, and it was a really great looking car when I was done. Had uh, satin chrome wheels with uh, knockoffs for the hubs. It was neat. But yeah, I like all that old stuff. I think with the body off looks great. Yeah, the uh, Team Magic A scale was actually a really cool looking car too. Um, Sorry, I'm kind of. I think I missed a bunch of. Uh, yeah, that was like a Lamborghini of nitro buggies. Didn't work good, but it looked great. At the time, they offered uh, Adam Drake a hundred grand a year to race for them. So they called called us and asked us if we can have Drake, and he was like, "No, nah, I won't do it because I won't be able to win anything, and then I won't have a job later." Um, let's see. Sorry, I'm going through. Uh, some of the lists here, Delta, TRC, Schumacher Cat. 
I mean, in the era of four wheel drives, that was a super exotic rubber band built car, uh, which continued to be rubber band for way longer than rubber bands should have ever yeah. been a front well, suspension. Cecil Schumacher was a genius for sure, but yeah, I, I didn't have any Schumachers on my list. Uh, TC3, yes, uh, I would say that's a, definitely a changing point, even though we've all gone back to belts. But when that shaft car came out, it really kind of changed everything. Uh, and it was especially before brushless. Uh, RS4, I, I mean, I feel like that maybe gets more credit than it. I mean, it was more of a body to me than the chassis. You know what I mean? Because it, it was a, in the touring car era when it first started. You had my first review for car action was the, I don't know what it was called. Schumacher, it was like a 10 scale four wheel drive pan car. Like when touring cars didn't have us, was what we're doing. You know, you had a small Tamiya and then you had a little Yokomo. And Schumacher came out with, I don't know what chassis it was based on, but it was a big Alfa Romeo body. It was huge. It was 10 scale, very like scale, but balloony. And uh, then the RS4 came out into perfect scale and, and a nice body. So I almost feel like RS4 gets more credit for being something because the steering rack broke all the time, I think. Um, but it came out with a, a good body and good wheels, which, I mean, that's classic uh, sell for an on-road car because you're really buying the body to me on a lot. Of, if you're, you're not racing, you know what I mean? People pick, that's how I picked my first car. I was like, which one looked the coolest? Um did anybody say Cloudbuster? Uh, I was reading the things and I was going to say Cloudbuster. Uh, I would probably put that in there. I haven't done it yet. Again, I'm still still taking uh, suggestions. You can sway me with intelligent or really dumb comments. will probably make me think of it. I can't remember if I had the Cloudbuster on there or not. Don't. Don't get, don't get revealy on us. Got to save it for next I, week. I want to know. Um, Cloudbuster is cool. Uh, I think at the time of the first monster truck craze, obviously everybody had that thing and built everything off of it. So it's definitely cool, and especially with the plastic body. And does it have eight shocks? Eight shocks of oil or eight shocks of air? Before, I never had one. I couldn't afford that shit. Uh, before Cloudbuster and uh, RC10, were there any other RC models where you could pretty much build an entire car without using any factory parts? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, yeah, the, I think those are the two that really, you know, made yeah. the aftermarket. A, a yeah, big I mean, that would be a, a good uh, a, a pro thing for that, why they should be on the list. I mean, especially if you had an RC10 where I grew up racing the gold tub, you eventually did not have an RC10. You had uh, an MIP transmission. I had a uh, different chassis. I had trailing arms. I had a different steering. I had different arms. I had different shock towers. Uh, I really don't think there was many factory parts left on there. Um, so yeah, I mean, that was sort of the joy of actually racing back then is that you actually bought a part and either changed it dr dramatically or at least looked dramatically different. Now there's really nothing. It's like, Ooh, I got a battery strap or a, uh, old machined aluminum hinge pin brace. Great. Uh, Charlie, I looked up whether or not I have Cloudbuster, but I won't tell you. You have to <laughs> buy them. He answered his own question. Uh, let's see uh, what else we got here. I will say for the longest time, uh, if you were running, if I was running RC cars with my buddy or just by myself in a parking lot someplace, any place where randos could find you, they would be like, you know, is that electric or gas? You know, it's clearly not gas. Um, but they would also say like, I got a friend who has a clod buster. Like everybody knew someone who had a clod buster. That was the car that they knew. And then after, and later it became the T-Max, but, or a Trax, they would call it. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, everybody knew somebody with a clod buster. Uh, this guy just bought, uh, thanks for coming. Uh, he just bought the re-released, uh, SCX 24, uh, probably should have bought an SCX 10, but all right. I mean, you're having fun with it. I don't know. I'm not, not going to hate you. Uh, mm -hmm. micro RS4. I did the SCX 24 and, and I've got the, whatever, I forgot what associated calls there. There's but these, these yeah. are fun, but it's fun as like your fifth RC car. And this is the one you use when it's raining outside and you make mountains out of uh, comforters and stuff. I would not want to have a mini, a mini anything. I'm not dissing the team associated one, but 
this is like a fun, you know, third, fourth, fifth car in your stable for me. If I was going to go mini, I'd actually want something to go faster than that thing. That's really probably one of my pet peeves is mini crawlers are somewhat of the most boring things on earth. And I like crawling. Um, the ba fa ugh, Whatever that word is, Baja 5B. Uh, I would say that's probably a really good top 25 choice. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I mean, when yeah. that thing came out, despite being one of the worst things ever to drive, it was amazing looking. Uh, it did kind of launch fifth scale out of the obscure, super weird people into kind of more mainstream. Um, but it still looks cool. I just wish they had updated it to be four wheel drive at some point in their life. And they kind of missed that mark and went out of business like 11 times. So <laughs> I can't really argue about it. Um, but I do remember that release. I got screwed out of going on the trip. I don't know if you went on that one, Pete. Uh, where I, I remember coming around the bend and seeing a certain buggy torn up and then yeah. it down on the side of the road. And when I was. was at Extreme and uh, they did this trip and it was supposed to be me, Mike Velez finally decided that he was going to be part of the magazine again and went to Mexico and uh, they rented Bajas and he crashed and it cost him like three grand. Um, yeah, my my joke was I said, "Hey Mike, when your wife asked you uh, what happened to three thousand dollars from the bank account, just say, oh, I took it out and I, was, I decided to roll it over.'" <laughs> and more importantly, he I forget who was in the car with him. He had an HPM employee who then yeah. created a, a workman's comp issue, and <laughs> probably probably why uh, HPI went out of business all because of Mike crashed his. Uh, uh, Whatever it was. Yeah. Well, that car was torn up. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, I saw the picture. He hit a cactus in the middle of nowhere. But uh, he claims something else. Uh, uh, on that trip, on that trip, they they paired you with another person, and you would switch off driving the uh, the buggy. Uh, it was super cool. Um, but the guy I got to drive with, unfortunately, was so slow, like he did not go fast at all. And, and there's lots of there were lots of sections where you had to like keep it matted to stay on top of you know. I don't yeah. know um, whoop, but to, to, to the, the faster you went, the smoother it got. And he would do the opposite. So like, it would be hours of just, you know, I was like seasick. I'm like, dude, no, oh, go faster. That's my story about Baja. Uh, Durango, mm, I wouldn't put any of their cars in there, to be honest with you. Uh, yeah. Carpet off road, I mean, I'm, if you watched this before, I'm just not even going to acknowledge carpet off road as an existing class. But, uh, uh, I mean, when they when they were Team Durango for real, when the guy uh, made his own car, uh, that was a cool looking car. And once it got bought out, it kind of just lost all its. Uh, well, I'll tell you, there's no way those Durango cars weren't great race cars. I mean, they weren't different than any other race car, so they, I'm sure they were fine. But I think it's crazy that if you don't spot have if you don't pay drivers to go out and win races, your car is junk. You will not sell them. That, that's bananas to me. I think that's kind of a backward thing for the uh, RC industry. Uh, I don't know. Uh, maybe. I mean, you you want to buy what wins. Not, uh, you know, I remember. Right. I but remember one, one thing if Durango said, yeah, dude, we, we've got like, there's 10 of the best drivers in the world. Team Associated has three. Um, uh, Losey has three. And we have the other four. And we just can't win because the car sucks. You know, but they... Durango never really sponsored like a full field of top drivers, did they? Yes. Who was who was the top Durango guy? Uh, I mean, they were probably more European because that's where the country uh, the car came from. But uh, at one point, I think uh, Durango had uh, Billy Easton driving for them. Uh, I think Cavalry ran their car in four wheel drive. Like before, it became like its own brand, and it was the one off guy. He built a lot of. A lot of uh, oh, no, that, that I remember. But once they were like, okay, now like Durango's a serious company. We're not building like conversions. We're, we're doing our own thing. I don't recall having any like real name brand guys really making a, a go of it. Yeah, I think they did for, for a hot minute. But you got to remember, it got bought out by Horizon and then basically the <laughs> yeah. sucked all that uh, waste. Yeah, I remember even Pops Lewis, I remember going, being at a, a, a Winter Nats in Florida and uh, uh, they had just picked up Jason Rona as a driver. And I was like, does it really make that big a difference? And he's like, yeah, we couldn't sell a car down here, like in this area, until Jason was going to the local tracks and winning with it. Just because, you you know, people will buy whatever is winning. And if it's a, if it's a team associated track, it's a team associated track. And you need somebody to get out there with a Lozy car and win with it. That's, you know, what was the word from Pops. He's like, yeah, like, we're seeing a big difference. Jordan Newman, 
he apparently won the Worlds with some car. 2011, DX410, but that's not even the one I was talking about. But I'm, I, yeah, I could be wrong. I'm not like fighting for this. Like, yeah, no, no, but they just they just had. I mean, like I said, their their claim to fame was a hot minute. I mean, whoever like yeah. the guy probably sold his company, made money, and then then the 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 machine sucked it out. Uh, XO1 took me a second to read what I was reading, but uh, I would say that was a, a an amazing car because it was the first insane thing that would give you a hundred mile an hour out of the box car. Yeah. Uh, I, I had that on my list, but it fell off for a different Traxxas. Cause I, I thought, well, you know, for all it's done for RC, cause it certainly exposed a lot of people to the hobby when it blew up on, you know, the Yahoo front page and stuff. Um, for people who are in the hobby, I don't think it's been a massively influential car because no one else is really trying to build XO ones. I know Arma has their speed thing, but yeah. um, that, that to me is like an, an It'd be like, well, what are the, the, the 10 greatest cars of all time alongside Camry and Ford Escort? And you'd be like, you know, Murcielago. Like, no, that's not really. That's a great car, but that's, you know, it's a supercar and it's, it's a different thing compared to what are the great cars that have actually influenced the industry, you know? So what I learned from running the X01, and that was actually a, on the cover of our first issue, which I was super happy to get that car from Traxxas, um, and it's still broken in my garage. Um, it, what it said to me was when I actually got that thing up to like 98 miles an hour and the distance it took and the, I look at all these people that claim their cars go like a hundred thousand miles an hour and they're on the street uh, and the run ups like 150 feet and their GPS says it went 98. And I was just like, it's not even po- I don't even understand how it's possible with some shitty ass wheels, you know, not on the ground because on the XO one, you needed the front splitter to be the long one to be stable. Yep. And when you took that off, it was a nightmare. Uh, that's the only thing it taught me is that I don't know if I believe all these cars that go this fast. I mean, I know that infraction claims that it goes super fast, but I couldn't, couldn't even get that thing to go straight. So but I, I'm not hating that thing. But at, I think at, at, one, at 100 miles an hour, you're looking at 147 feet every second. Yeah. So that's, it, it's crazy. I had to go to the parking lot of California Speedway because I was like, to go to one parking lot, I'm like, you know, because you're used to running like 30. I remember we did a test on the Schumacher uh, Nitro three-speed car, whatever the hell that thing was called, and went like 70. Mm-hmm. And and we couldn't even get that to go. Well, first, it was hard to run. But uh, even at 70, it was like the car's trying to flip over backwards. We had to put weight on the front. And then I look at all these guys that, you know, like in the middle of the, the, the bayou or whatever on some street with bumps, and they're like, oh, my car is worth 120. We got 42 yeah. inches of ground clearance and tires that are very around. Yeah, so uh, that's the only XL one. But I would say that for me, I think the XL one might make my list. Uh, it's something that definitely crossed my mind just because of what it what it was, and it's still an amazing car. Um, I actually think about always trying to bring it back to life when I'm looking at it with the broken front arm because I did crash and it did flip over backwards and rip an arm off at 86 or whatever. Do you think we'll ever see someone go faster than 202? No, I mean, I'm sure maybe someday, but like, is anyone like working on that right now to try to beat Nick? Uh, I think the era of like, let's try to do that is over. Um, I mean, you just have to build a land missile. That's uh, how it. I mean, that's yeah. the trick. Uh, I mean, with all the battery tech, I mean, it's just, we keep leapfrogging and volts. So, I would be more impressed if he did it with less volts. Um, yeah, well, power is not the problem. It's just it's traction. Right. Uh, and distance. I mean, I'm sure if you get, get it to go a uh, quarter mile and be able to see the dumb thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, yeah, it's so much traction that you can launch it like a dragster as opposed to like... Yeah, you the one-mile top speed cars. Um, Axial. Axial. Axial uh, X10 uh, probably should be in the top 25. Um I think I had the Scorpion, and then I bumped it for the SCX10 as the. What more. was the Scorpion? I don't remember that one. Scorpion was the AX10 like crawler crawler, but they sold that as a. It was like the first full-on crawler you could buy in in one box, as opposed to converting a a, a to me a was it the TLO one with that. To me, I had like a, a little mini car that had solid axles. That was the one they would grab and try to com- and make it into a rock crawler. And this that was before there was one in a box, which was the uh, AX10. Um. Let's see. 
this, I'm going to be honest with you, this probably be, will, should be in the top five. Uh, I would say because of that era and how far this, this brand and everything went with this, uh, I always tell the story, we went to do a photo shoot at the state park and an old 80, I just probably wasn't 80, she looked like, a, like an 80 year old lunch lady. She's, you know, taking her money to go in the park. Uh, and I said, hey, uh, I was, can I not pay? I'm just going to do a photo shoot. And uh, I have some RC cars. And her 80-year-old lunch lady goes, oh, my husband has one of those, you know, Max things or something like that. And to be honest, as much fun as electric is, uh, the era of Team Max to where you could hear people and had a very distinct uh, whale, you could hear Team Max is being run in your neighborhood if you live somewhere where there's people. So... I don't know how many they sold. I don't know why, you know, all shit. Somebody put a metric shit ton. Uh, this is probably an English shit ton. So it's bigger. Uh, a lot. So uh, if that somehow isn't in the top five, you know, this election is rigged and I didn't vote for it. All right. T Max or X Max? T Max. Sorry. I read T and I'm from the So my whole rant was about T Max. I'm going to take <laughs> your X Max down. But now we'll talk about the X-Max, uh, another crazy-ass truck. I'm not sure I'd put this one in the top five like the T-Max, but um, definitely, uh, like a, I would say, the start of giant, big-ass trucks that go too fast uh, and are scary when you get run over by them. If you ever run into yourself with the T-Max, I mean, it's not like a little 10-scale little bouncing off your legs anymore. Uh I guess we're in the Traxxas phase of our lives right now. Uh, TRX4, uh, I mean, maybe. I mean, the technology-wise, it's. Uh, I mean, the Traxxas is, has always done some weird, you know, uh, the Emacs with a two-speed. Uh, are they the first one with remote locking diffs on the on the Emacs? Did they have remote locking on the Emacs? They did, right? Summit. Summit. Yeah. Uh, so they've always done some crazy shit, and the the electronics on the TRX4, at least the uh, non-sport version, are pretty nuts. Uh, I'm still scared to touch that because uh, I feel like I'll screw it all up. So uh, stock electronics will probably stay in that truck forever, although the the motor and the speed control are not related to those two. Yeah. I know when I was making my list, I frequently found myself putting down the first in a category and then the current best one. And I like my list, I think I have SCX-10 and TRX-4 for that reason. SCX-10 was the first scale trail truck. And then, you know, I think the TRX-4 is the best one. Yeah. Uh, are T-Max bigger in England? Um, no, but if I'm reading the wrong letter and thinking of the other one. But the, the Nitro one, like I said, the, there's there's nothing more distinct than hearing a, a, a Nitro RC car to be recognizable. And electric, you don't hear anything anymore. So it's it's not the call of... What is that noise to walk over when it's in the street? Uh, I think I think T Max put Traxxas on the map in Europe because before that, people didn't really buy trucks. They weren't really. I don't think they were moving on of stampedes and rustlers. But then T Max was the the breakthrough because it was just such a bananas, you know, for the time. Somebody, somebody did put a uh, stampede somewhere in there. I meant to click on that one. So if you put it, uh, I think you're smart. Uh, stampede has been around for. 400 years now, I think <laughs> Jesus Christ drove it. Uh, it has changed mildly. To be fair, Jesus had a sledgehammer, Derek. But oh, sledgehammer. Sorry. Sorry. It's pre, uh, um, but uh, Stampede was the truck. Uh, when I worked in a hobby shop and the new person came in, instead of saying, buy this small piece of shit for 240 bucks, I said, uh, buy the ready-to-run Stampede uh, and you'll be happy. Uh, it was mildly fast when it came out. Uh, I feel like they have a brushless version now, which is pretty good. Uh, it was indestructible. Uh, it looked cool, wheelied, uh, and it was cheap. I don't know what they are now, but I mean, at the time, I could tell you because I sold 20 million of them at JP's Hobby Shop. It was 189 bucks for the ready run, I think, and like 159 for the kit. If I remember uh, pricing. That was brushed, you know, with the old. Radio on none of the cool stuff. So, uh, I, I'm, should it make the top twenty-five? I mean, I, I can. Argue. 
I think if I don't think I have it on my list, it, it belongs on the list. I think it's an omission for me. I have other Traxxas cars. Just for just for the sake of that was pretty much the first real ready to runs, like tr the Stampede Wrestler. Uh, yeah, be, before the Traxxas made ready to run, really ready to run. Uh, I remember, uh, I think we had some kind of a ready to run shootout uh, to, for at RCCA, and like the Kyosho ready to run, you had to fill the shocks and paint the body. Like I, I feel like that's not ready to run. Um, but yeah. I think tracks. I think tracks is out there. They clear bodies for like ten minutes, and then they figured out the painting, the the printed yeah. body. Yeah, 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 how to paint the body, right? Yeah. And maybe the dingo HO, maybe. Yeah, and they had mechanical speed controls for a short time too. Oh, well, that's what I. That's what they had. So I mean, uh, somebody put a remark in there. Remember who was burnt herself on a resistor, and I definitely have burnt myself on a resistor. Uh, uh, what else we got here? Anybody else got anything smart or dumb? Uh, Joe admitted that his list was dumb. I saw that comment in there. I saw you, Joe. Uh, trophy wrap? Oh, that's the associated one, right? Uh, was, was the trophy wrap the one twelfth scale short course truck from HPI? No. I, well, the trophy rod I know is the, the, the associated... Uh, oh, it's a rat rod uh, short course truck. Yeah, whatever. The, I, don't, I guess it's based on a short course truck. It's always a test of my memory of what things are called when I'm just kind of scrolling and reading here. Um, worst mistake I made is there anything else? Um, I don't know if anybody else put anything else in here. I mean, we can go over the turbo hopper, but I already did. Here's Joe, just so you I can acknowledge that you did make one of the worst lists, even though I didn't read it all. Well, uh, you can change your list, Joe, right? We haven't done anything with this, have we? Huh? Joe can change his list, can he? No, he can't change his. <laughs> he just voted libertarian, so uh, his number one pick is not going to make a difference in the uh, in the list. Um, By the way, Joe's profile pick is his actual face, which uh, <laughs> good for you for putting it out there, Joe. We Hon Buster, any, anything that glaringly uh, we didn't list that might be. Feasible. I mean, uh, on road cars, I mean, TC3. Um, I mean, we didn't talk about A scale nitro stuff. I don't know if I would honestly put any of them in there, even though they're a lot of them are amazing. Uh, like a nitro pan car, I would probably go with the Mugen just because that's what I ran. Uh, we didn't really talk about Nitro Asco. I, I mean, I, I thought about this for a while, and I and, and I think the RC8, uh, maybe an MP5 to 7, you know what I mean, where they didn't really change, they just changed the number. Kyosho, it's kind of hard to ignore their dominance uh, and, and influence of just overall design because most of the cars that won eventually did merge back to that. Um was Kyosho the first to get away from the whole chain drive with a cage and do the that's the, the modern design of you know a low a aluminum double deck chassis? I remember, I remember when the Burns came out. That to me was, but again, my, my experience was the Tower Hobbies catalog. So the Burns to me was the one that did that first. But maybe you can have that first. No, I I I, I mean back in the day, if I remember my earliest memory of an A scale was Kyosho. Um, I don't. Uh, yeah, I, I have either Burns or Inferno on my list. One, one of those two. Yeah, I wouldn't. The Burns was a chain drive. No, no. Be, before the Burns, they had the Land Jump, and I think uh, and the Vanning, and those were cage chassis. I think I think the, the the real chassis was just a strip of aluminum, but it had like a, a cage around it, no real body. The body was just like a little sliver. Right, kind of like the jet was it a drive? Drive? Yeah, it was really crude and you know weird, and it had like an airplane engine in it. You know. But yeah, the burn, yeah. the burns, of course, looks dated today. But the burns, it still follows the essential template of a modern eight scale buggy. Like you would not be like, oh yeah, that's from a different planet. It's right. an eight scale buggy. It, it's thoroughly, you know, modern, modern as far as the ascent. The yeah, they just buggy. usually suck in their they suck in their gut a little bit and get nicer looking plastics. Uh, I think the javelin was the one I was thinking about with the, but that was two wheel drive with the airplane engine stuck on the back. Yes. Uh, uh, Javelin? Well, there was a nitro version of the Javelin. Was it called the Javelin? I thought the Javelin, so. Javelin is electric chain drive, four-wheel drive buggy. But I think 
There was something that looked just like it, but it had a nitro engine hanging out the back. Yeah, and it was an airplane one. It was dumb. Yeah. Um, I remember my friend bought got one from like secondhand, and we tried to put it together, but make it go, and never did. Um. Uh. The low C8, the low C8, so when it first came out, it was not, I wouldn't say it was a huge improvement over, it didn't win, <laughs> uh, but it was a design changing movement of weight. Uh, and the first one that came out, they even admitted it was way too aggressive for most people because they kind of made it uh, like a qualifying car. It, you had to pay attention to drive it on like an A-scale car, like a Kyosho that basically, uh, was a little bit slower, but you couldn't maintain the low C pace for an hour without crashing, which would then negate any, any lap time advantage. But they did obviously get it right. Uh, they haven't won. Did they win the Worlds? I don't think so. Um, but it still was a prettier car. I mean, they made it look. Packaging was much, much nicer. Uh, the definite drive feel of the uh, first version was turn in and like most a skill cars was turn away it was a you know more direct thing but it was way too aggressive um uh I feel Lante must be the greatest so you got you guys on youtube get highly aroused yeah i don't i haven't got a boner over in avante but it is sitting behind me so you can, you can kind of see it uh again it's a great looking car it's a great looking car. I don't think it's going to be in my top 25 of all time just because, uh, again, uh, it's just not one of the top 25. But in the terms of Tamiya, uh, probably would be in there. Um, and Tamiya makes about 1,050 cars. So it's not like every Tamiya car is their own top 25. I wonder how many Tamiya cars uh, chassis are actually worth. I'm going to ask that to Fred. Yeah, there's a lot. I know, like, what is the total kit count from day one? You know what I mean? How many different kits have come out? Um, well, see, this, this is a different poster, like the first 100 Tamiya cars. It only takes you up to, like, 1982. I mean, it's, it's crazy. Uh, so here's the difference because, you know, I sort of ignore newer cars because uh, I, don't, I don't have the same arousal as uh, that guy put it for newer cars. But I will say the uh, infraction is a pretty badass of car. That's the pickup truck one. Uh, well laid out. I don't like the 10 foot chassis braces, but um, it is definitely, for me, has made, took Arma out of the make junk category to, uh, oh, they make good looking stuff. And their electronics don't blow up when you plug it in, which was nice. Um, Traxxas Max. Again, like the so the newer ones have a disadvantage because I like the Max, um, but again, I, I think I would take a stamp like for all time. I don't know. I don't know if I'd put that on there yet. It's only been out a year, right? So, I mean, good truck. I, I want to put the T Max, uh, uh, you know, slash and stuff in there probably before that. We didn't talk about that on before, but not because it's better, it, it, but because of the newness factor. I would put the T the X Max on it before I put the Max. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's a disadvantage because it's you know a year old. Uh, we didn't talk about the slash. Um, slash is way up there for me. Yeah, I, I will agree. Uh, and you know, and in reality, it's not the most exciting design. It was pretty ugly if you really took the body off when they first made it. I still don't. Really like great. I, I don't. I guess I don't mind gray plastics when they're not mixed with other plastics. Simply to me, because it looks like somebody made a mistake. Um, you know, if it was all black, it would probably have looked a little bit less toy-like. Uh, but I, there's no denying what it did for electric racing in general, because there was no electric racing. It was pretty much dead. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's just it, fun. It's just a fun car to drive. Yeah, it's fun. And cheap and tough and all that stuff. Yeah. I 100% agree. Like I said, for me, it actually brought me back to electric racing. I did not race electric. I was racing nitro, and I saw a YouTube video of people racing them on the track, and I was like, holy shit, look at this stuff. It looks so cool. And then we got them all, and we went to the track and started a slash class. Yeah, have you had the body off of your Fox Raptor yet? I, I don't want to move and show you that I haven't taken it out of the box yet. <laughs> I haven't. <laughs> it has a black chassis. Does it? Yep. 
and I'm more excited to open that box. <laughs> uh, do they still call it a slash in Australia? Why wouldn't they call it a slash in Australia? Is there like just because you go to the slashers? Hmm. I don't know. Um, this guy is googling random things. Uh, Kong head? No, I would. I don't even. I don't know if I'd even put the Kong head in the top twenty-five yeah. of uh, to me of cars. Um, yeah. I like all the participation. There were some good and not so good suggestions in here. Uh, some of them probably reminded me uh, of things that I need to think about because I have thought about uh, this for a while and just the, the JRX uh, stuff. So the good news is because uh, my friend here, Psycho Midwife, is asking where the next issue is. It's being finished. Believe me, it's very difficult to work from four places in the world uh, and have someone lay out the magazine because it takes a long time. This one has been a pain in my side, obviously. Uh, it is coming. Uh, I will have an angry text after this. Um, and next week, we hopefully will have our list together with a little video presentation of uh, pictures, at least, of our choices. And then the article will be in issue 42, which will hopefully follow much quicker than the last issue of forever. So it'll be less than forever until issue 42. That's what I can promise you, but it will be pretty quick. And then uh, a, a different article next time. So Pete has to go, I have to go eat. Uh, Jeff, go off yourself for not showing up with your dumbass Canadian modem. Uh, everybody can here- Jeff, can pop up to say goodbye? Uh, he didn't even log on his phone, so suck it. Is there um, anything else you can do? Who, Jeff? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Whatever. We're all mad at Jeff. So fuck Jeff today. Uh, um, you can load up the PNG with his mouth taken out so Jeff can say goodbye. Yeah, I don't know if we have it set up for the two uh, <laughs> the two people. If it was a third person in here, we can definitely uh, uh, <laughs> Sorry guys, I'm a bag of dicks today, but I'm just looking at my posters jerking off. <laughs> anyway, um, we have a magazine. Subscribe to it every, some, every once in a while. Uh, it doesn't help us much, but if you're going to buy something, I mean, has a affiliate thing where we get like three cents, uh, and I'm saving that to buy a new hat for Jeff, uh, which will take another 10 years. Uh, other than that, we'll see you next week. We are going to be back next week. If we don't make it, it's either someone has to work. You can buy a hat. You can buy the magazine. It's 10 bucks. Uh, we appreciate it. I reply to your emails. I like to thank, uh, uh, I don't remember his real name, but he is on here. Of Psycho Midwife has written heartwarming emails to me, uh, and I've shared them with the guys. It made me cry a little bit, <laughs> but it was nice. It's nice to hear. You, know, you could tell me I suck too. I also think I suck uh, in the magazine. Uh, but that's what we do. We'll be here next week. Uh, if you're watching this after on a rerun, uh, thanks for watching on the rerun. I'm sorry I didn't uh, pick your dumb comment or a good one. I don't know which one you had, but you pick which one you gave me. Uh, and then I will read a comment. So if somebody throws in something, I'm still swayable to my top 25. I have ideas. I didn't read anybody's. I didn't read Pete's previous article because I know he did this before in the past. Uh, but uh, it'll be different. And Joe's Turbo Hopper will not be in the list, even though he picked it as number one. Thanks. Bye.